Hey everybody, uh, usually it's Thursday, but happy Wednesday. How's everybody doing? Hopefully, I don't have any sound issues today. If I do, let me know right away. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. <laughs> I swear every, every week, every week there's a little problem with the sound check, but I think we're good. All right, so it's Wednesday at four. Today, we're making crab cakes. Not sure if you saw my little tease, but uh, I'm calling them Eastern Shore Crab Cakes. I'll get into that in a second. But first of all, we're kicking off Wednesday. It's hump day. It's okay. Have a little cocktail. Let's pretend it's 6 o'clock or at least 5 o'clock. You know, maybe some people will watch this on tape. Maybe it'll be 11 o'clock and they won't think I'm drinking so early. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to stay festive, so I made a bay breeze. Why did I make a bay breeze? Because the crabs came from the bay. So I felt will uh, tie me in to, uh, to what we're cooking. And you can see people are so excited about the cocktail, they're actually calling my phone. I don't know if you guys heard that. So um, Bay Breeze, super simple. It's uh, vodka, it's uh, pineapple juice, and it's cranberry, a little garnish, right? So uh, that's it. I'm sure there's a lot of variations of the Bay Breeze, but uh, this is the one I make. Mm. All right, so that's good. So. When I talk about crab cakes, everybody has a variation of crab cake, right? There's the Jersey crab cake, the Louisiana crab cake. There's the Baltimore, Maryland crab cake. Allison, if you're watching, um, I'm bringing these down to you tomorrow just so you know I'm freezing them. So you're, you're getting these. Now, my friends from Baltimore, they are snobs about their crab cakes. And you know what? I don't know if they're going to like my crab cakes. I hope they do. But I tried to keep them pure. I tried to keep it simple. And um, I'll tell you what, that jumbo lump crab cake is expensive. So you don't want to mess up, but you don't want to cover up the flavor either. So what we're going to do first is we are going to make, um, it's like a little bit of a hot sauce. So if you guys are familiar with uh, Louisiana hot sauce or Nashville hot sauce that you pour over your chicken, that's sort of what I'm doing. I'm just uh, putting a little twist on it to make it a little more crab cake friendly. Um, I don't know if you guys will like this sauce, but I think it really complements the crab cake just a little bit on at the end. So let Eric, me, yes. The Eastern Shore comment. Our, uh -oh. our old neighbor, Tina Williams said, Old Bay baby. Yeah, that's right. Old Bay baby. We're going to do a little Old Bay in here. Oh, yeah, I do it my Old Bay. And Allison Woo. from Baltimore agrees. Old Bay baby. You know what? I'm doing a little bit of Old Bay. I always feel like with the Old Bay, you know, maybe you want to add a little more at the end. I don't want to overpower it with Old Bay, but we're definitely using some. All right, so how do I make my uh, crab cake sauce? All right, again, think of Nashville hot sauce, but we're going to start with, when I have seafood, I love um, horseradish. I couldn't think of what it was. Horseradish, it says it right on the bottle. So we're going to start with horseradish. And then what I did is I took um, hot sauce, just like this, hot pepper sauce, Tabasco, whatever you're using. I put lemon juice in here, and there's also garlic, smashed garlic in there. So that's going to go right on top of the horseradish. So you can see this is going to have a little kick to it. And I think people like that when they're, they have seafood. So now we're going to add some melted butter because what else is better on crab than butter? There's really nothing better than butter anyway on anything. But when you're talking about seafood, when you're talking about crabs, butter. I mean, butter, clams, crab, lobster. You got to put butter in the sauce. All right, here's something that um, either you will love or you will hate. This is smoky paprika. I love smoky paprika. I don't know if you guys, it, it's, it's kind of got like a little bit of a barbecue-y flavor. I don't know if you guys have ever eaten Pringles, but Pringles barbecue, it's, I don't know. This sauce has a little bit of that kind of flavor, but um, not 100%. Anyway, you'll see if you try it. Now, I'm just going to put a little uh, cream cheese in. Uh, I'm sorry, sour cream. And we're going to put mayonnaise in. See, there's a lot of stuff going on in this sauce. And then you guys always hear me talk about salty, sweet, and sour, salty, sweet, and sour. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of honey in. So it's hot, it's spicy, and then I put a, again, you guys, if you watch me, I love this tomato paste. It comes in this little, this little um, 
squeezy. I'm telling you, it's the best thing in the world. Anyway, just a teaspoon of tomato paste, a little salt and pepper, and that's it. That's our sauce. Couldn't be easier. A lot of this stuff you probably have lurking around in your pantry. The recipe is always posted. Either it's posted above the video or below the video, so um, don't worry about writing anything down. But that's the color. I love it because it kind of reminds me of, of like crab. It's got a beautiful color like crabs to do when they're cooked. And that is what we're going to do for that. I'm going to put this to the side just for a little bit because we're going to get into making the crab cakes. Now, I am using jumbo lump crab meat. You don't have to use jumbo lump. Jumbo lump is so expensive, you guys. I mean, this... This was $45 for the pound. So now you know why when you go to a restaurant, crab cakes are so expensive. You don't have to use the jumbo lump. You can use regular lump. You could use back fin. You could use the imitation if you wanted to. Um, you're not gonna get that super great flavor maybe, but hey, it's still gonna be a good crab cake. Now what I did because I used this very expensive jumbo lump meat, I am trying to keep this recipe very simple with very little filler. Now, if you like filler, it's okay. Add more breadcrumbs or add more uh, saltines. I, I give you that tip in the recipe as well. I want to keep this beautiful jumbo lump crab meat pretty pure because it was so expensive, I want to make sure I taste it. So I'm just going to like smash the lumps just a little bit because they're a little too big um, for the crab cake. But as I mix it, they're going to get even smaller and smaller. Just be sure that you kind of like run through it with your hands to make sure that you get all the shells out. Now, that looks pretty good to me. Now, one thing I do with my crab cakes, you're going to see, is it's all about just enough flavor and just enough filler. So hopefully I, I strike that balance for you if you try it. I'm going to start off with um, some mayonnaise. Again, the recipe is posted. Now, I saved a little bit of this mayonnaise for the end, and you're going to see why. So just hold on on that. Now, I'm going to add lemon juice because, again, with seafood, it's nice to have some lemony flavor to, uh, to brighten up the dish. We're going to put some garlic in. Now, I'm using this tube because I'm lazy and I love it. Um, but it's about two, two cloves of garlic um, smashed and then um, minced. You kind of want to almost make it into a paste if you can. Then what I'm going to do is Dijon mustard. Again, this is Grey Poupon. You can use any kind you want. You can use any mustard you want. But I'm telling Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any Grey Poupon? <laughs> Please pass me the Grey Poupon. <laughs> of course I'll pass you the Grey Poupon. The only thing is, it, it's better to pass it in a car, you know, out the window. <laughs> I, I, I That's won't. where we all use our mustard. I know. I'm telling you, I, every time I buy Dijon mustard, I, I go to try to get a different brand, and my hand just goes right to the Grey Poupon. So <laughs> I, it's just, I don't know. It's just the way it is. Okay. I promised you Old Bay. Now, I'm just going to put a teaspoon of Old Bay in here. That's about it. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of onion powder. And then again, I like a little hot sauce in there as well. And then Bates is, is putting all this on her grocery list right now. For oh, Friday. who is? Say that again. Annette Bates. Annette. Oh, God. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I get nervous. I, I hope you will post the picture and let me know if you like the recipe. Again. I haven't put any filler in here yet, but there's going to be two binding agents that I'm going to use to hold this crab cake together. I, I don't want to smash it too much, but again, it's a cake, so we have to get that lump crab meat, just work it a little bit. Now, that looks good. Now, all I'm doing is about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. I made these breadcrumbs fresh. Um, I, I always tend to use fresh breadcrumbs for most things um, like this. And for me, like even when I make my meatballs, I just take a couple of slices of white bread, throw it in a blender or in a food processor. I like the texture of the fresh better, but you can grind up saltines. You can use the, 
you know, the breadcrumbs, the, like the Progresso breadcrumbs that are very classic. A anything that you like. But if you haven't tried fresh breadcrumbs, um, do it. Because I think it, it just makes them a little bit lighter, um, in my opinion. Okay, so that was binder one. Just a little bit of breadcrumbs to help hold that together. Now, what I was saying before is because it's so expensive, I understand if you want to add more breadcrumbs because you'll get more crab cakes and that's okay. But maybe if you're going to do that, maybe don't buy the jumbo lump, maybe get the lump or the back fin. Um, just because this is a very, it's a, believe it or not, the more expensive crab is a little bit more subtle and sweet. The, the um, little less expensive, it's not that much less expensive, but it tends to have more of a crab flavor. So it's really just the preference whether you want the jumbo lump or say the back fin or, or just the white crab. It, it, just, it just depends. It's a personal preference. And the claws too. I mean the claws, I love crab claws. And, and you can make this with them too. Not, not classic maybe, but you could absolutely do it. Okay, now this is what I do. I whipped egg whites. Um, now I did about two egg whites in here. I, I had jumbo eggs, to be honest, so I had a little bit more than I needed. How, now, do, you whip, how do you whip egg whites if someone's new to this? Oh, if you want to whip the egg whites, you just uh, you can actually do it with your hand and a whisk, or you can just do it in, uh, you know, like with your KitchenAid stand mixer. Uh, it's just a pinch of cream of tartare, and then you just whip them until the yolks, I mean the whites are stiff. Okay. I wanted stiff whites. Now, you can see, see that? They're holding up to my crab cake. And when I'm doing that is I want to make sure that it's light and airy. I don't want a dense crab cake. Again, personal preference, I've eaten many crab cakes. Some of them are very dense and very bready and can be very good. Some of them are very light and, and, and subtle and airy. And that's the kind that I prefer. Again, it's just my, my preference. You know, crab cakes are one of those things. It's like uh, Italian gravy. It's like that slopper I made last week. Everybody has a take on it. There is no right way to do it. The right way is the one that you love the best. Question from Rose Ruckus. Hi, Rose. What well, you got? Why are you putting egg whites in your crab cake? Well, we want to bind it, right? We, we want it to stay together. Now, I could have just used egg whites. I didn't, I didn't have to, or I could have used an egg. I didn't have to do the egg whites. My preference is a light, airy crab cake. To get that, I think, um, and I've tried a lot of different ways, I think the egg whites whipped to a stiff peak is the way to get the fluffiest of crab cakes. All right, so I think that's it. That's looking pretty good. Now, remember I told you we are going to uh, keep our mayonnaise off to the side for just a second. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. Now, the way I'm doing these is just going to take a bake pan. Now, I'm going to air fry these in the air fryer. I have the uh, PowerXL air fryer grill that I'm using today. Um, you can get that on PowerXLproducts.com if you're looking for that. It's a great unit. Again, that's a conversation for another day, but that's the one I'm using to make these. Now, the reason I'm using a tray and I'm not putting them on the airflow rack is because these are very delicate and they, I think they will fall through the airflow rack. So we're going to put them on a baking sheet. I use a cookie cutter. It, you don't have to. Um, I like the cookie cutters for me because I tend to make everything too big. <laughs> so, Why is that? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, everybody knows when they come over to my house for dinner, um, you know, maybe I make twice as much as I need or maybe, to be fair, Sometimes I even make like four times more. But why is that, Eric? Because I'm afraid there's never going to be enough. No. And I used to cook at the restaurant. And? And I'm Italian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, there, I, let's just say there's a lot of reasons, but I am petrified to have people come over and, and not have enough food. That, that scares the living heck out of me. <laughs> All right. So there's the crab cake. Um, I like the cylinder again. I want these to be thicker because they're light and they're airy. Now, if I was frying these, like in a little, like frying them in a pan fried oil, uh, what I would have done is simply made them flatter. Again, there is no right way to make a crab cake. For this recipe, I like them tall. 
Um, the ones I cooked um, this afternoon, which I'll, I'm gonna plate right now, I, I did make them bigger and flatter, more of a meal. So this is how I think of crab cakes, right? About one and a half to two ounces is an appetizer. You know, anything over that, like maybe two, three ounces is a dinner. Um, you know, maybe you can make a five ounce, uh, which I did, these are, these are big. Um, Jesse and I ate those for lunch and they were filling. One of the, because it's, it's all meat. It's all, there's, that protein just, poof, it's so satiating. It's so, it's just so delicious. Ugh, I, I, I can't, you know, crab cakes have been around. I mean, has anybody ever not remembered crab cakes being around? No, there's a reason for that because they're delicious. So, and there's so many different variations. Now, what I like to do at the end is I like to take the mayo. I'm not going to bore you and make a hundred of these, but I like to take the mayo and a little mop and then I brush the mayo all over the crab cake. Again, I'm air frying them. And what the mayo is going to do is give it a beautiful, rich color and it's going to add um, another level of taste to it. Eric, J Jeanette Marino would like to know where she can find this recipe. All right. The recipes are always posted just below the video. So if um, so, you're watching it live, but right after this is up, this video lives forever on Facebook. When you go through my timeline, the recipe will literally be probably right underneath the video, and um, I'll have a post a photo and the recipe for the sauce and the crab cakes. Quick question. Yeah. Um, Dana White wants to know, is mayo better than olive oil to <laughs> top it with? Well, you know, you could spray it. Like, you know, I like that Evo oil sprayer, you know, uh, brush on some olive oil. You're going to get a beautiful color. I love the mayo for this recipe on the outside of the crab cake. I think it just gives you a little bit more um, sheen and just a little bit more flavor. But again, it's not 100% necessary. I just think it's a, a cool way to go. Plus, you already have the mayo out, so it's, it's, a, it's a really easy way to do it. So that's how pretty they look going in. And then, of course, I made a couple. Like I said, I made them bigger. Um, and then I'll show you how to plate them up. Now, you'll see how pretty and golden brown these guys are. See if you get really close in there. Look how shiny they are. So pretty. Um, again, these, I, I just formed these with, with my hand. Um, but I like using the cookie cutter, too, because the cookie cutter... You know, like I said, it's, it's an expensive dish. So if you're making it for company, this way you know that everybody's going to get the same size. It kind of helps you portion out a little bit better. Um, now, don't look at the, do not look at the tater tots. The only reason I made those tater tots is because Jesse and I ate the other two for lunch, and I didn't have a full pan, and I wanted tater tots. I mean, I'm just not going to lie. I just felt like I was in the mood for some tater tots. Now, these crab cakes are very delicate because you saw we did not put a lot of filler in them. Now, I'm going to break this open for you. First, I'm going to plate it, and then I'll break the other one open. So how, how we plate this up is just with a little bit of this sauce, I'm just going to drizzle it right on, right on the top. And then not too much, just enough to make it appetizing. You can always have more sauce on the side, right? So I just serve these crab cakes over just a little bit of salad with a little dressing on it, whatever dressing you might like. My favorite way to eat crab cake, I love it over a bed of spinach. I don't know why. I love a crab cake on a bed of wilted spinach. One of my favorite uh, ways to do it. Um, so you can see how pretty the crab cake looks. Again, that mayo gave it a beautiful sheen. And the hot sauce, I like the hot sauce. I love Nashville. Um, hot sauce on my chicken. Just adding the, um, adding the mayo, adding the tomato paste, and the horseradish just kind of brings it to a different place. And for some reason, it just goes so well with the crab cake. All right. So let me just show you the inside of the crab cake. I'm just going to take this right here. And I just want you guys to see how fluffy and how big the pieces of crab are inside. See that? That is, you know how they say nothing but net? 
that's nothing but crab. I made a pound of crab and I only used a half a cup of breadcrumbs and some egg whites to hold it together. There's, you can't even detect the bread in there. Now guys, I understand that people love uh, bread and that's fine with me. But when I'm eating my crab cake, please don't make it too bready. Now, of course, if you have me over for dinner, I'd be happy to eat it any way you make it. <laughs> so, we have quite a few shout outs. Oh, good. I love doing shout outs. Say hi to Lisa Toman or Toman. Hi, Lisa. She said, she said uh, I'm going to say Lisa T. Hey, Lisa T. She likes your hair. Oh, God. You know what? July 20th, I'm getting a haircut. July 20th. I can't wait. She thought your hair was wet. Little does she know it's gel. Trying to oh, man. I got. I, down. I do. I have like a whole thing of hair. I, I could lift my hair right off my head. It's so stiff right now. And we have um, some regulars today. Darren Cates is here. Uh, Michelle McVicker is always here. Oh, hi, and Darren. Hi, Michelle. Like, Sorry she was late, but she did arrive. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, we have Rose from Tempe, Arizona. Mm, mm. I, I, I love the weather in Arizona. One day. One day I'll get there. One day. Um, of course, we have uh, Paula Buccia. Hey, Paula. Pennsylvania. I think Paula has literally been here every week since we started this, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, nice she, to see you. Paula also asked, can you freeze these? I think it was shade. Or yeah, shade. definitely. So actually, the ones I'm going to make here, I'm going to freeze them because I'm going to see my friends down in Baltimore tomorrow, and I promised them I was going to bring them down. Uh, plus, I already ate a pound of crab, so I think it's only fair that I share. So Allison and Duffy Francis, you guys are getting the crab cakes that I made, and I will freeze them, and they can post because they're on Facebook, and they can tell you how they came out from Frozen. Uh, some more regulars. Brenda Dunn was here. She says, hello, Aaron. Hey, Brenda. How you doing this week? Arius Clark and Lynn Tolbert. Oh, hey, Arius, you said? Yeah. Hey, Arius. I like that name. And hey, Lynn, how are you? How's everybody doing? I think... Um, I think that making crab cakes is probably one of the most fun things that you can do. The reason is, as long as you put some filler, some binder, you, can't, you just can't really mess them up. So it's really just a question of, are you Baltimore? Are you Eastern Shore? Are you Louisiana? I'm a Jersey boy, Jersey blue. You know, there's a lot of contention there with my friends. But all crabs are good. <laughs> I've never really eaten a crab that didn't taste good. I'm just putting that out there right now. And you can make you can make a delicious crab cake out of any of them, and literally from any part of them. So you don't have to buy the fancy stuff. You can actually um, get it a little cheaper, and it comes out great too. And you can cook these from frozen, put them right in the air fryer frozen? Yes. Yeah, definitely. So you know what I'll do? I will post the uh, timing for the frozen ones. Now, those are really thick, the ones that I made. So they're going to take a little longer. If I, if I flatten them out a little bit, it would probably be a lot less. I'm thinking probably about 20 minutes. Again, it just really, like if you make a one ounce or you make a four ounce, it really just depends. So I'll, I'll, I'll post a little chart on frozen crab cakes. But, you know, the crab's already cooked, so, um, you know, it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Robin Baker just tuned in from Bedford Heights, Ohio, and she loves crab cakes. Hey, Robin Baker. Well, I'd love to know if you're going to make these, and I'd like to know if you're a, a Maryland crab cake or a Louisiana crab. What's your crab cake? What's your geographical preference for your crab cake? Marilyn Smith said, can you bake them if you don't have an air fryer? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, people have been baking crab cakes for long before air fryers were invented. So, yeah, definitely. I would say um, these depending on how big you make them, are about 10 to 12 minutes, 400 degrees. I would suggest about 12 to 15 minutes in the oven, um, and then just check them. Just make sure they're hot all the way through. Um, honestly, what you're going for, Jess, if you can get in really close on this, what you're going for is that look. You want that beautiful crust on the outside because the crab is going to be light and delicious on the inside, so you're not going to burn the crab cake all the way through. Just about 12 to 15 minutes, 400 degrees in the oven. They're also great pan seared. Just put like an inch of oil in a skillet and then just, um, you know, like on a medium high heat, let the oil get hot and then just sear them in that oil. Uh, probably it's only going to take like three or four minutes on each side. Again, when it gets crispy, flip it. 
great way to do crab cakes too. There's so many different ways to cook them. Um, there's really, you really can't mess them up. I know it's such a big deal. Everybody goes to a restaurant and they're like, how many people do you go out with and they see crab cakes on the menu? And they're like, oh, they shut the menu. Crab cakes, crab cakes, crab cakes. Everybody loves them. Now, I, people eat them. We lost it. Okay, we're back. We're back. <laughs> hey, hi. Wi-Fi went out. Oh, no. You know, we're getting a major storm here. So maybe that was it. But anyway, um, I've even seen people put them on a sandwich. I don't think I'd put the jumbo lump on a sandwich. I want to taste it. I don't need all that bread. But again, it's personal preference. We have a very interesting question from Laura Millaway. She said, it's very sad we have no good crab in Arkansas. Could you do this with freshwater fish like crappie or bass? Uh, yes. The, here, here's one thing. that You need a fish that's going to hold up to mixing it because some of those lighter fishes, like maybe a flounder, um, I would suggest making it but I would triple the filler that I'm giving you. So I said a half a cup of filler, meaning breadcrumbs, I would do a cup and a half because those fish, they need a little bit more to hold them together. The crab is a little more hearty, um, especially the jumbo lump, it's pretty dense. So that's my suggestion to you, triple the uh, breadcrumbs. So guys, thanks for all those questions and I love doing the shout outs, I love seeing everybody every week and some of those same names just really make me super happy. Um, Allison and Duffy, we're coming down. See you tomorrow with crab cakes. Better not complain about them because I'm telling you, I, I feel like I nailed this one. I don't know, not a cocky guy, but I don't know, I think these are pretty good. So guys, thanks for joining me on Wednesday instead of Thursday. I hope you will join me again soon. Enjoy your Bay Breeze and a crab cake and uh, you know, maybe it's a holiday weekend for you, holiday week. You no, know, July 4th in the middle, it's kind of weird. Some people took that week, some people are taking this week, some people are taking long weekends. So I'm glad you guys took the time to join me. See you later.